previously on Sailing Terrapin. We sailed around the Lofoten Islands and Kala had a blast running on beaches. knots of wind from the south and we are heading south after being in the local Foods. So uh, so we're gonna stick around Buda for a little bit and that's okay. It's a town um, where a lot of people change crew and uh, where they start heading north to uh, Lofoten, Tromso and then Svalbard from here. So there's a lot of fishing boats and uh, strong expedition boats here. It's uh, pretty cool to see the large variety. And Terrapin is just um, over the corner, tucked away nicely. And uh, we're leaving Buda and headed south about 45 miles um, to a small little anchorage. After leaving Buda, we traveled south every day to a new anchorage or a new dock in sunny weather and in rain. Our first stop was Rudoya. So we, uh, we are back in Rudoya, the Red Lion which is over there under the fog. And this time we anchored, which is good because the dock is um, rafted up three across. And uh, the only concern we have is a uh, swing room, but we're gonna go check out the depths over here to see how close we can get to shore. Yeah, that looks about like two meters, doesn't it? We're looking forward to it. We are um, leaving the Arctic Circle. We're crossing 66 degrees 33 minutes north. And we've been up here for about three weeks. Today is beautiful with sun and uh, we're passing these jagged peaks and uh, it's pretty cool. Volkswagen was a neat group of islands with lots of anchorages, but each anchorage had its challenge. It was either too deep, or there wasn't enough swing room, or the bottom was rocky. We finally 
settled on a great location with just enough swing room and a sandy bottom with plenty of rocks to hike on. It is a Friday morning and we just picked up the anchor from Volkswagen and uh, first thing in the morning we get to go under these wires that are uh, just a little bit taller than our mast. Power lines. Fun fact about Norway, um, the chart heights are always a little bit different than the actual height. So. Uh, our mass is 21 meters. They said they were 24, but they're actually 23-ish. Thankfully, the tide's down a little bit, and we have a lot of As I mentioned, our first challenge leaving Bogswagen were the power lines. And then, as soon as we were out of the protection of the islands, we had wind gusting from 9 knots to 40 knots in a matter of seconds. We decided, as we were passing the beautiful Seven Sisters, to stop in Yota for a few days and let the So, we are in uh, Yota, Norway, and uh, waiting out some gusty weather. Um, pretty protected marina, or guest haven. So, we're going to figure out where we're going next. Look at these cruising guides. Um, so this is Norway. And this helps us figure out uh, where we're going next in Norway. Um, talks about the anchorages and the cities and what they have to offer. And then our next stop after we get near Alasun will be the Shetlands and Lerwick. And then we hope to go to the Western Hebrides, come around the top here and go to the Isle of Skye and then back through the Mole of Kinter, past the Mole of Kinter, down to Dublin. And then later uh, this summer or this early fall, we're going to um, be off the Iberian Peninsula. So we need to figure out where our stops will be after we get across the Bay of Biscay, which is right here. France is right there. And then we'll go Spain, down to Portugal, and then uh, around October, November, go over to the Canaries. So uh, we're going to use the time that we have here in Hota to figure those things out. Hota was a great town, but the docks were not very dog friendly, with sharp metal spikes that would cut Cala's paws. So, as need be, Baxter lovingly carried Kala back and forth to the boat to take her to the shore. Day of spring, and I just want to sing. 
To everything that's moving Every single little thing To them birds flying free Fish in the sea Fly Beautiful Anchorage, just north of Rorvik. Long day of putting up the jib, taking down the jib, putting up the staysail, taking down the staysail, putting the jib back up, putting both away, motoring, jib, staysail. That was our day. And then it's six o'clock and this is what we found. Got my shoes in my hand and my feet in the sand. I got 20 ducklings in a row, like a little marching band. And they sing. We just left in Anchorage, a bit north of Rorvik. Um, sailed through the Rorvik Channel, and now we're out headed to another Anchorage about 50 miles away on our way to Alasun. Um, nice morning. Yesterday we had the motor sail most of the way. Today we're sailing a little over six knots. Um, we're about 60 degrees off the wind at somewhere between 10 to 15 knots. Um, so it's beautiful. Wind's supposed to pick up this afternoon, so we can't expect this to last. But at the moment, it's uh, pretty awesome. We continue south in and out of the fjords every day, dodging rocks and traffic like the cruise ships. As we got closer to Christensen, the weather began to deteriorate, but we still had to continue our southern progress to Alasu. Thursday morning and we're motoring down the coast of Norway once again. Uh, in the summertime we have a lot of high pressure in the Arctic area, a little known fact, and that, will, that high pressure causes uh, a decrease in the, in the winds. So you don't have much wind for sailing and you have to motor quite a bit. So most of the motoring that you're doing down the fjords fortunately is protected by uh, rocky areas that break up the swell from the ocean. Unfortunately there's a Hestavika section that's from Christensen to Alasun that's exposed uh, to the ocean swell. So what we have to do is motor as much as we can, as fast as we can, through a section that's exposed to ocean swell and is very, very shallow um, and has a lot of rock and unfortunately has a lot of boat traffic as well. So right now, we're motoring through the Hestavika section, you can see some of the traffic there. You can see some of the uh, some of the rocky areas as well. And we are having to motor with probably 15 to 20 knots on the nose at a very slow pace, which makes it fairly miserable. Fortunately, we only have 20 miles or so left to go. It's gonna take us about six hours to do that. And then uh, we'll be in a uh, small uh, marina called, or a dock called Bud. And we'll wait there and maybe wait for a gale to pass us and then continue on Dallas soon.
finally arrived in Alassoon where we met up with our friend Jen from Western Australia who just happened to be traveling through Europe. Rarely do plans like this work out, especially when our schedules are dictated by the weather, but they did and we were excited to see where they would take us next. Next week on Sailing Terrapin, we meet up with Jen, Tracy, and Andy and head to Andal's Nest for hiking, climbing, and a little base jumping.